Next is Master Kevin McKernan. Thank you. I have no conflicts to disclose. Um, I have 25 years of experience in the genomic space. Uh, I've worked as a team leader of R&D at the Human Genome Project at Whitehead and MIT, and I have over 57,000 citations to publications uh, in my space uh, and multiple patents on, on PCR and sequencing. Um, next slide, please. No conflicts, next slide. Uh, in February, I used mRNA vaccines as a spike in control for some RNA sequencing libraries, and to my shock, discovered that the expression vectors for the vaccines are still in the vials. Uh, I looked at this in over a dozen vials, uh, and it appears that this expression vector is above the EMA guidelines and the FDA guidelines. Uh, you can see this in this preprint that's described here. Next slide. As a, as a refresher, there's two different processes that have been discussed in this BMJ article. The clinical trials were run on process one, which uses in vitro transcription off of synthetic DNA, but they switched to process two for a scale-up, which used E. coli to amplify plasmids, and those plasmids are what still remain in the vials, and we're not within the clinical trial. Next slide. Uh, this is another depiction of this process. You can see getting plasmids out of these E. coli is, is a challenge and can sometimes uh, lead to residual plasmids inside the vaccines. Next slide. Uh, these are the expression vectors that we discovered on the left in the Pfizer vaccines. They also exist in the Moderna vaccines, but they're a little bit different. The Pfizer vaccines specifically have this SV40 promoter, which was not disclosed in the expression vector map that was given to the FDA, uh, or I'm sorry, the EMA, but the expression uh, vector has a 344 base pair promoter with a nuclear localization signal known as this SV40 promoter. Next slide. Uh, so we went to verify this by designing quantitative PCR assays that target the spike sequence and the vector sequence. Uh, next slide. Uh, and this work demonstrated that uh, with even a 1 to 100 dilutions, you could get CTs of 22 for the DNA that's in these vials for the vector, which is not part of uh, what should be in these vials. Uh, we did this in triplicate across eight vials. It's very consistent, and they are over the EMA and the FDA's uh, limits. Next slide. The EMA has a ratio metric limit that looks at RNA to DNA ratios, and you can measure, you should expect an 11.5 CT offset between the spike and between the vector. What we see is only five to, to seven CT difference, which means there's an 18 to 70 fold over the limit of the 330 nanogram per milligram uh, recommended by the EMA. Next slide. Uh, you can readily uh, assay this in any other lab around the world now. If you put these vaccines directly into quantitative PCR, you can get CTs as low as 17. Uh, this is very important to know because COVID was diagnosed with CTs less than 40, which is over a million-fold higher uh, contamination being injected than what you might get from a nasal swab. Next slide. Uh, we know these vials. Uh, were, these vials were sent to us anonymously in the mail, so we do not have the cold chain. However, we can measure the RNA integrity by putting them on electrophoresis systems, and we do not see a substantial difference in the RNA integrity from the vials that we received versus what's been published about these in the past. Next, uh, next slide. Uh, various people on Twitter have now begun to, re to reproduce this. Uh, in addition, I'd point to the EMA's documentation uh, where they have an 815-fold variance across 10 lots uh, of double-stranded DNA contamination uh, documented in the EMA process. Uh, next slide. Uh, there are some risks to this. There is double-stranded DNA can create interferon responses, and Keith Pettin at the FDA has done great work demonstrating the, the risks of DNA integration into the genome if these things are in, in, in vaccines. Next slide. The call to action here is all of these primer sequences are now public and people are downloading them and trying to reproduce this work. You can reproduce this work in 60 minutes with a microliter of the vaccine, which is one three hundredth of a dose for less than $10. I encourage everyone to try and do this to understand what we have at foot. I will note we did not measure any of the bad lots that are in the Schmeling et al. paper that demonstrated high adverse events in certain lots. We were measuring what seemed to be normal lots. Next slide. And thank you for your time and consideration. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. McKernan, for your presentation.